Very interesting. I've never been, been asked, how did I first hear about Room 222? Um, uh, I think my agent just got a call one day and, uh, and, um, um, and said, these people want to see you about doing a series. And I said, I haven't met them. And they want me already. I don't have to audition. I don't have to do anything. And, um, and then they said, it's a, a show written by Jim Brooks. And I said, oh, I had just done a, a little television series called Hey Landlord. The, the, the writers all loved me. And it happened that Jim Brooks was a young writer starting out at the time, and he had written one of the episodes. And um, so when he wrote the, the pilot for Room 222, he said, I want that guy. And so, um, so they called me in, and, um, and, and they told me, you know, that it was Jim Brooks who had suggested it, and blah, 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 and he's the one who's written this pilot. And so I thought, well, gee, gee, I hope they don't think I'm going to play this part like that neurotic guy I was playing right. on, on Hey Landlord. And I did. I had a heck of a time, the first few days of rehearsal, um, actually through the the whole thing, um, because I thought, do they do? They don't think that I'm going to play it like that, do they? And has anybody noticed that I'm not playing it like that? You know. And maybe any minute now they're going to come up to me and say, no, that's not what we expected from you. You know. Well, it. <laughs> it it turned out fine. Jim Jim was, had been around too long to expect me to play this one the same way I played that right. one, you know. Right. So take me James L. Brooks, and then Gene Reynolds is there. And J Gene Reynolds, it was. Uh, did you ever see the? Uh, I won an Emmy for 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 that. And did you ever see my Emmy, uh, um, my speech? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. In the middle of it, uh, I wanted to thank Gene and I. I couldn't think of his name, <laughs> and uh, thank God, uh, and I said that, and I said, I just forgot my producer's name, <laughs> and everybody laughed, and during the laugh, it came to me, <laughs> and I, uh, um, he, so, was, he, was, he was a wonderful guy. Right. I didn't appreciate him enough, because um, I wanted to, well, uh, I didn't appreciate him enough, because I, I thought that he was like the network, and the network we hated. Sure. But he wasn't the network. He was the producer of the film. I film. I didn't know how all that stuff worked back then. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But but he was terrific. Um, Wrote he, a lot of the episodes too, or directed them. Gene it, or I, I think he did direct a few. Okay. But I think he was. I I don't know. I don't think he he out and out wrote an episode. But he constantly was in on the, on the what did they call it? the f the fixing, so sure. to speak. Yeah, yeah, the creation, the Bible of the show. Right, the, yeah. right, right. And he, he you know, um, he was he sat with the writers every day, and and they, they decided, you know, if there was anything good, bad, or different, you know, and and fix it, so to speak. Uh, uh, however, we uh, we the actors, we were. We were naive, I guess, in a way, about how television worked and how networks. Um, you see, we we were knocking out the competition every week. Uh, a lot of people got mad at us because we we knocked out the Beverly Hillbillies, you know? <laughs> and um, and we were at the top of our time slot every week. And the and what we actors wanted. We wanted to be able to do, if it's a funny story, do a comedy. If it's a serious one, do a serious one. And so every week the net the network would send you know memos to the producers, more comedy, more comedy. And uh, we said, what do they care what we're doing? We're knocking out all the competition. Right. We're at the top of our time slot. What? Leave us alone. You know. 
But of course, that's not the way it works. You well, know. and that first episode, they had a laugh track in it, which yes. they didn't the rest of the episodes. Which we knocked out. Great. We, we, the actors, we we complained and bitched about that. We didn't. I said we think it is so stupid that a car drives up to a desert and there's a big laugh. Where is that laugh coming from? What right. is that? You right. know. Yeah. And we hated that. And and I think we were the first show that ever got rid of a laugh track, mm -hmm. you know. And um, and then, uh, well, when when I first started doing it, my friends would say to me, Mike, I hope it goes five years for you. And I used to say, I'd rather stick a nail in my eye than play the same part for five years. And um, but we actors got to love each other so much and loved working with each other so much that it lasted five years and we could have gone five more because we just loved working together and and I mean Lloyd was my best friend and, and <laughs> Denise Nicholas I'm laughing because um, um, at one point she was married to uh, what's his name? Man? Bill Withers? Bill Withers and uh, eventually they broke up. And <laughs> right after they broke up, when we came to work early one morning, and we're sitting in the makeup room, I am in the, in, and Denise walks in, and I started saying, ain't no sunshine when he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she said something very dirty to me. <laughs> Tell me about the relationship with Lloyd. Uh, oh, Lloyd was my best friend. I mean, he is, and and it's strange that we were such good friends because his life had been so different from mine. I mean, Lloyd, Lloyd he was some amazing kind of a guy who had been. It seemed like he had been in the army and in the Marines. And uh, in the Marines, he was part of an outfit that for a long time, maybe today, I don't know, the Marines didn't admit there had been such a, an outfit. They were called First Marines. And they were like the SEALs, the Navy SEALs are today. And he'd been part of that. He'd been in the Army. He'd been in, in Korea and what have you. And... Um, and he, he, he was just, in fact, when he sadly died, you know, after we had done, done the show, um, a few years afterwards, died of cancer. And I went to his funeral, and there, were, there was like a marine general, that, and there was a commander in the Navy that, that spoke about Lloyd. And, uh, that whole side of his... I mean, I knew about that stuff, but I didn't know that he was <laughs> so famous that he'd have a general come and speak. And, um, but the thing was that he, while we were doing the show, he, he, found, he fell in love with the idea of flying. And he bought a little, a little airplane. And he, you know, we took his flying tests and everything like that. As a matter of fact, when he took his first flying test, he had, you know, he had taken classes in it and studied it and everything like that, and 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 he passed it, and he said, uh, I may have passed it, but I've got to take it again. I'm not satisfied that I know it as well as I should. Wow. So he took it a second time, and passed it a second time. He loved flying, and when. Right after the show, Room 222, ended, I get a letter from the Navy, who's, and they say, you've been asked for a recommendation by Lloyd Haynes, who is joining, and it just said USN, USNR. And I called him up, I said, Lloyd, what the hell are you doing? You're an actor, what are you, you're joining the Navy? He says, I'm joining the Naval Reserve because I want to learn to fly jets. And he did, he went into the Navy, he learned how to fly those F-14 at the time, fighter jets and everything like that. And he became a commander in the Naval Reserve. He was just, a, he was just an amazing guy, right. really. 
How about the great Karen Valentine? Oh, I love Karen. And Karen, really, I don't think, even though she won an Emmy the same night I won mine, um, I don't think she was properly appreciated because that girl is a very talented actress. Very talented because occasionally we would we would have a scene together. Uh, I I remember um, there was one scene we had in one episode where I kind of had to chastise her for doing something silly or or whatever it was, and her her emotional response was so real and perfect and so I mean. It was one of those very difficult things for an actor where you can see that she's really crying inside but desperately trying not to show it. Right. And uh, she, was, she was a very good actress. And, uh, but of course, because she was playing a kind of a ding, dingbat character, you know, I don't think people realized how good she really was. Have you heard from any of the students, the actors that played students over the years? Huh. Well... There was an unfortunate episode um, in, um, with um, a guy that I loved, Hishimu. You know, we had this, this wonderful, these wonderful two guys, because it was the days when black people had afros, you right. know what I mean? And he played Jason for those. And he played yes. Jason, and, and David Jolliffe, uh, I forgot his character's name. Bernie. Bernie, Bernie. But the two of them walking down the hall, uh, Jason and Hashima with a big black afro, and, and, and Bernie with a big red afro, the two of them side by side. I said, oh my... God. And, and uh, the network, actually, after the first, first year, I tried to get rid of them, and I said, you fools, you know, don't do that. My God, they're such an amazing couple. Right, you know? right. Uh, um, but... Um, I was on a show that uh, that uh, that Hashimu got um, got cast for, and I was happy to see him on the set. I was doing this series called Sirota's Court. I was playing Judge Sirota, and uh, Hashimu got uh, got hired to do um, a character, and um, uh, Hashimu was an actor who. He, he was wonderful. He did, did a wonderful job. But he was an actor that really needed to go home and study it and all of that. And, um, and those comedy guys, they wanted to see the jokes right now. Right. You know? And if you went a second day and you were still fooling with, still trying to master it, you know what I mean? I... Without my knowledge, they fired him the second day. Ah. And I, I came in and I said, where is he? They said, we let him go because he wasn't... I said, he would have gotten it. Right. He was wonderful in Room 222. Yeah. Some actors need a little more time. Yeah. You know? The greatest actor I ever worked with, uh, Paul Muni, would have, uh, would have needed more time. Right. Um, right. He was fantastic when he worked, but he needed to know exactly what his character is thinking every minute. Never mind say the words right. What am I thinking throughout? And, um, and um, uh, Hashim was a lot like that. He didn't have the kind of range that, that Paul Muni had, but, but um, that was a sad, sad thing for sure. me. Um, and I... I um, um, I felt guilty like it was partially my fault. It wasn't my fault, really, but, but I felt like maybe I should have fought harder. I would, didn't even know how to fight in those days. I didn't know what to tell those guys. Am I, do I have to explain what acting is to them and all of, yeah. all of that? It was just... Um, so um, that, was, that was a sad thing. And Judy, uh, is it Stranges? Judy Stranges, Stranges. Was, was wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Um, she, she's, uh, she, she at one point after that, after the, we did the series, she was doing a little series, a children's series, you know, um, uh, a Dinah Girl and something and Dinah Girl. Right, right. And, uh, and actually, uh, they, 
and they hired me to do an episode of that where I was like the evil wizard. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, actually. Now, how proud are you? Because I watched the show when it originally aired. Mm -hmm. It's Now it's on reruns again on the Aspire Network, which I've oh, been is? watching Ro it again. Room 222 is? Yes, it is. Oh, my God. I didn't even... I don't even know the Aspire Network. Right. That well, is. and it's, it's fresh, and it still works today as if it just happened. Do you know what? I, I have often thought that if I were... If networks were the kind of people I associate with, which they're not, uh, I had, I wanted to suggest that somebody just run 222 over again, just the way it was. Right. Because I think kids today would get a kick out of that, you know? I agree. Uh, but, uh, you know. But do you hear that? Do fans come up to you and say, that show meant the world to me? Well, I, I had them. Mind you, I have to say, the people that say that are pretty old now. And I, and I usually... When they, when they come up and say, I, oh, I loved you on Room 222, I say, you're giving away your age. <laughs> but, uh, where did you film it? Where? Yes. Well, we filmed in, you know, the, uh, the studio was 20th Century Fox, and all of the hallways and classrooms were at the studio. They were at Fox. But the everything that was like, whether we needed a football field, whether we needed the auditorium, anything like that, we shot it at different uh, schools. Um, first, we shot it at Los Angeles High School. And, um, and as a matter of fact, that's where the opening of the show, showing the front of the, of the school, the only place you'll ever see it is in the beginning of Room 222, because a year or so later, there was an earthquake and the whole, and the, whole uh, the school, Collapsed, oh, you know, too bad. And, and it's no longer there. Uh, I mean, there's something there, but nothing. That was a wonderful looking school. It was. You know. What about the music? What an amazing theme that is. Yes, yes. Um, what's his name? Uh, Jerry Goldsmith, I think. No, 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 no. no. Fella, a black fellow with a Jewish name. Oh. Um, what's, um, oh God, I should know that backwards and um, oh, I started to say Bernie, not Bernie. Uh, I'll think about it. I'm sorry. That's okay. Think of it off the top of my head. I loved, I loved that theme song. I do too. And as a matter of fact, because a lot of times I, 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 I am not, um, I don't love to be recognized in public. You know, I like to just go about my business. And, uh, uh, a lot of times, without realizing it, I'd be in a mob of people and I'd hear myself saying, bah, 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 and I would oh, not, uh, not now. <laughs> not here. <laughs> well, I want to close with this. If you could talk directly to those Room 222 fans, what do you want to say to them? Oh, listen, um, thank you for having made us, <laughs> made us a hit show despite the network. <laughs> and... Um, and um, maybe somebody could tell the network, why don't you just run that show? Don't try to upgrade it. Don't try to fix it. Just run it just the way it was. And I loved that show, and I loved the people in it. 